I'm going to talk to you about three strike and you out. Three strike and you out. And we can learn many uh, important lessons by just studying the, the Bible, the scripture. And, and there's something about here that took my attention, and that was Peter, about Peter. And he teach me about the thing not to do. Not to do. But Peter is also has something different and dynamic. Peter was a lovable disciple. And not only that, but the problem with Peter that he was very impulsive. And and he wanted to do it right now. He wanted to do everything the way he felt. And yet, he committed a mistake. A heavy one. A heavy one that can destroy a person. And he was in the presence of his own Lord, his master, Jesus. And yet, it seemed that when you began to think about this, he has something that we have forgot and many times I forget. We commit mistakes. I'm going to be very straight with all of you. I have commit mistakes. I'm the one who, the first who raised my hands. And I tell you, it's, it hurt. He's supposed to be the greatest leader of all leaders, which he was. But something happened. Peter had a familiar failure. And he got discouraged. And discouragement was one of the things that really was dangerous in that moment. Peter experienced great, great discouragement. And Jesus had told he would deny him three times. And let me read it. What Jesus has predicted came true. It hurt. It hurt. Well, we are confronted with the reality that we are not perfect, that you are vulnerable, that you have to be crucified with Jesus every day. Every day. And that's no easy. What Jesus had predicted, it was this. In John 3, uh, 13, 3, 38, this is the, the, the moments of facing reality. Simon Peter asked him, Lord, where are, where are you going? Jesus replied, where I am going, you cannot follow me. But you will follow later. And in that moment, Peter asked, Lord, why can I follow you? Why I can follow you now? I will lay down my life for you. Then Jesus answered him. Will you really lay down your life for me? Do you? I tell you the truth. Do you remember those always those words that always when Jesus wanna say something, I tell you the truth. Do you know? That's all over the Bible. I'm telling you the truth. Before the rooster cross, you will disown me three times. 
And I'm talking slow because you got a good sound system here. <laughs> My wife would be all the way back. <laughs> but you do have. In life, we can't give up. We can't give up. We can never give up on people. You can't. Yes, Peter denied Christ. No one but three times. And not only that, that was a really terrible, big failure in that time. But it wasn't not too big for Jesus Christ. That is some time and we began to fantasize about many things in our life. But this is the reality that, that, that Peter had to realize because he was so impulsive. I mean, seriously. Look what Sonny was saying to you. And when I call him Sonny, he because we are friends and we, he called me Nikki too. <laughs> so that's not his respect. I would love to call him apostle, bishop, bishop Sonny against Sonny. Hello, everyone is doing fine. Blessing all of you right now. I give you my blessing. I'm the first one who can say, Sonny, where you been? <laughs> no. A failure, but it wasn't big enough for Jesus. And there was something when I say that Peter was so impulsive, it was that he was. He's always speak out. He, he, he really, he really want everything. And yet, here it come the time when he said, no, no, I will never deny you. Never. Peter. Peter, you are too emotional right now. Because what I'm going to tell you is going to hurt you. You going to deny me three times. Remember that. No, 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 Peter. Oh, yeah, yes, yes. And then when he was in Gethsemane, Gethsemane, oh my goodness, I forgot how to say Gethsemane. <laughs> he, and, and, and the time comes when Jesus is going to be betrayed by one of his disciples. And here is, he's praying, and Jesus is there, and there is James, John, and Peter. And there's something happened. There's right in, in the middle of the night. The untouched was shining and everything. And there is Judah leading the people. And there was one sign, one signal that he had to do. We glory a different One kiss. And here Judah came. And that's true. Peter was ready to die for Jesus. And there when, when the servants of the high priest came in. After Judah kissing. Then out of the blue sky. Peter took the soul. And right there he went. Bam, and cut the. The ear of the servant. Jesus said, hey, 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 you, hey, what are you doing? Do you know what you're doing, Peter? Huh? That's not the way the kingdom is. Look what you have done. 
This guy is screaming and all of this. How in the world is he going to listen about the kingdom of God if he's in pain? And here he cannot listen because there's blood all over him. Be healed. And that is Peter. And there is Judah. He commits suicide. And Peter was close to that because, because he was very close to Jesus. And now he denied Jesus. And Jesus told him, you're going to do it. And he did it. And now it's he got so depressed. And that's dangerous because when you are depressed, there's a lot of thought. You know, there's a dark side in our mind that the devil can really try to get. And that is suicidal. That was the element of suicidal, what happened to Peter. He was so, he felt terrible. He felt like a, a failure. I fell, my Lord. And when Jesus was beat up and all of these things and was breathing, his blood was going, the hell he can see. When Jesus was passing by, something strange happened. As Jesus was carrying that cross, he turned and there's Peter. And then they cross eye to eyes. And Jesus saw that Peter was hurting, that Peter was depressed, that Peter was in a state of danger. And he just gazed at his eyes. And then Peter. Look at Jesus' eye. It was a confrontation. And in th all through that, Jesus was selling a message to Peter. Regardless what you had done, I love you. And I'm going to be there for you. And when this, thing, when this thing happened, and Peter saw it, that was a way of communication Eyes to eyes. And that's what happened that uh, we, must, we must commit fatal mistakes. We all fall. Christ is bothered when we fall and, and we don't get up. He expects you to get up. Yes, you did a mistake. Yes, you know. Yes, you heard, but don't stay down. I want you to get up, to get the energy and the power to get up. Don't stay down. That's what Jesus, this is brother Christ. Don't stay down. You got to get up. When you fall, that is a failure, yes. Failing and getting up is not a failure. I'm going to repeat this. Failing and getting up is not a failure. It's a human. It's human. The Bible says in Proverbs chapter 24, 16. For those are a righteous man false. Seven times he rise again. Peter feel disqualified. That what the devil would love to do to many of you that really love Jesus Christ, that you have been called to the ministry, to you have been called for a cause. And let me tell you, many times Peter did it. I'm disqualified. What I've done is done. That's a problem we all have in our life. Because Peter was serving in a, in, in, in a position of leadership. That's how strong he was. 
And, I, and you're going to find out something that sometimes we forget. He was in a position. God put him there. Jesus put him there. He was in the position of defending the cause, defender Christ. But we got the tendency to forget. He got, Peter knew exactly many things that Jesus taught him personally. And one other thing, here it is. In Matthew chapter 16, verse 17 to 19. Jesus replied, blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah, for this is, was not revealed to you by men, but by Father in heaven. And I tell you, you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gate of hell will not overcome it. I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. Whatever you bind in earth, you will bound in heaven. And whatever you... This is... For, this is don't forget. This is, this is an encouragement. And whatever you lose and on earth, you will lose it in heaven. He forgot that. He forgot that Jesus already has said all of these things. Okay, you're going to fail. But I'm going to give you a promise. And I promise you, Peter. And I'm going to give you this blessing. And I'll give you the key. God, I don't know how many ministers is here. Oh, you want to be in the ministry. When you have a relationship with God, when you really, in your heart of heart, have a love affair with the heart of Jesus Christ, when you began to go and seek him, because when Jesus called me, I was 19 years old. And I know nothing about the Bible. Like I always say, the only thing I knew it was about Adam. But Eve was better. <laughs> but in this situation, in this moment, Peter, do you remember what I say to you? You want to be a rock. You're going to be my foundation. You will be the foundation to build up whatever, whatever you feel in your heart, the calling that you have, and all of you sinners. Where are you sinners? And, and, and you backsliders. I, I know what you're thinking. I know what you're thinking. You know what you're thinking? I'll tell you what you're thinking. I'm going to go ahead and leave it up. I'm going to do everything. And I'm going to wait the last, the last minute. And then I'm going to confess my sin. And then I'm going to go to heaven. You liars. You don't know. You don't know when, when death will come. You're not going to tell Jesus, wait, 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 you're going to strike out. The three strike law, talking about baseball, is 
in United States, there's many states they have this three strike law. Yeah. You break it, yeah. three times, goodbye, baby. Uh. <laughs> You're locked up for the rest of your lives. Yeah. Yeah. This allowed no exception to the rules. This is, has to do with the prior and persistent offenders when you commit those the third mistake. And you know something? Don't get me wrong. Second and third chance are often not available in life. Families, failure, marriage, discouragement, workplaces, mistake, layoff, being fired, the church, unforgiveness. We are the one that we kill the saints so fast. We judge them and we do all these things. And yet we come, we come with this fanatical fanatical way you got to be my way or you are not saved I don't want to be like you and you don't want to be like me because I'm better good looking than you God made me unique he make you unique God didn't make me twice. One time and the only time he made me when I got born again. You know, don't be super spiritual. What bothered me is that a lot of people, I don't know why about holiness. So when you receive something, it seems like you change physically. And it's true. But there's two ways of changing physically. <clears throat> You're going to go to hell. And there's a lot of preachers. I grew up in the, in the Puerto Rican church and in the Mexican too. Because somebody slipped into the, into the guest room when I was sitting down with so many people. And I had to speak. And somebody said, hey, you guys, you Puerto Ricans. And this was a Mexican lady. You Puerto Ricans marry nothing but Mexican girls. Talking about Julie. Talking about Gloria. Talking about Victor's wife. Because everybody followed me. They marry Mexican girl. Marachi. And, and you know, God has a way of redeeming our mistake. He got away. There is Peter in this situation. Discouraged. All the disciples got discouraged. They went different direction. Where are the teachings of Jesus? Where is when you see a lot of things in your life, did you forget that you walk with him? That you talk to him? That you break up bread with him? That he took you step by step for you to learn about what is going on in the future? And here is the situation. Do Jesus forget about Peter? I'm going to give you the answer, and I bet you, you never thought about it. And that is in Mark 16. It is written that Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of Jesus, encounter an angel at the tomb. In verse 7, this is what happened. The angel said to them, but go and tell his disciples, and Peter. 
He took him with him. He took him. I will not let him lose. He's, he's, he, I give him a promise. No. Right there with all the pain. Right there between the cross. His love. Here the cross. And here's pain. But here you come together. And take it to the cross. And Jesus Christ took Peter. I'm going to die. I'm going to die. But I'm going to take you with me. And when I'm resurrected. I'm going to give my command to the angel to go. And I want to meet you. I want to meet you. Every time I come with Victor, I scream a lot. Contra. Contra. Caramba. The disciple was so discouraged in that moment. And Simon Peter was fishing. But at the same time, look at this. But pulling up nothing but memories. Flashback. I began to think about all the good things that he witnessed with Jesus together. Oh, better days ahead. Better days with Jesus. Of, of the miraculous, the way he catch the fish all night. And when he made the declarations of faith that Jesus Christ was the Messiah, this is Peter. He's thinking of all of these things. Of when he walked on the water. When Jesus walked on the water. You know what? It's a flashing back that hurts. But sometimes it's a healing force too. Because you began to put two and two together. A miraculous miracle of feeding the multitude. That was Peter. And yet, in the middle of so much confusion and uncertainty, there has to be a moment that you have to think, what is your next step? God, the true exception. When Peter was on the shores and Jesus appeared, remember that Jesus appeared and and Peter, the first thing that what he did, he died. They couldn't believe that Jesus resurrected. And now they was taught to him very straight. Mary Magdalene and the mother of Jesus. Mary, go and tell the disciple and Peter too. And let me tell you something. There's going to be a wave sometime of discouragement. There's going to be a wave that you feel that you are nothing. You're going to feel that I cannot do it. I can't. I cannot finish my marriage. This is going wrong. Everything going wrong. I have, I have fornicated so many times. I don't know what to do. And then I go to my bed to my, with my wife. And here I am committing things that I never committed in my life. And here I came from a background that nobody want me. And nobody care for me. And then... God, Holy Spirit has come upon you. Look at yourself. Turn around and look at every one of you. You are a miracle. You know what God has done. You know that you have changed. You know there's something different in you. You know that your marriage got strong. Your children. Your children. Let me say something. There's a boundless forgiveness. A boundless forgiveness. The way when Jesus forgive, especially the, the woman that was caught up in adultery. Therefore, I tell you, 
her many sins have been forgiven. For she loved much. But he who had been forgiven. Little love little. The balance of love. And here is when we become and, 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 and when Jesus was on the shore and they were, he, he was cooking, he liked fish and eggs. Yeah, this is what Jesus eat all the time. Who talking there? I didn't give you permission to say. Ging, 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 ging. What's the matter with you? You know, female voices are different than men. What's the matter with you? Huh? Grab your wife and turn, cool it. That's right. No, 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 don't hit it, please. That's no good. That's my style of preaching. Talk, you talk to me, I talk to you. This is, to me, the most beautiful moments <laughs> with Peter and Jesus. This is, if Jesus is testing Peter, when they came in and they was having this fix, and the Bible says in John, Chapter 21, 15 to 17. When they, when they, they have finished eating, when they had finished eating, Jesus says to Simon, Simon, son of John, do you, do you truly love me more than this? Peter, yes, Lord, he said. You know that I love you. That's not enough for Jesus. That's not enough. Again, three times, say the same thing. Do you love me? Three strikes, you out. Now is the confrontation of love. Do you love Jesus Christ with all your heart and mind and soul? Do you know that he has forgiven you your sin? Do you know that he raised you up when you was down? Do you know that he had been, that united your marriage together? Do you know that he's the one who saved your children and your children are serving the Lord? Do you love him? Do you love him? Peter, three times. Do you love me? Ask him for the Third time, he said, this is what he opened up. He said, Lord, you know all things. You know that I love you. Jesus said, feed my sheep. Yes, yes, yes. Go back to duty. Yes. Hey, stand up. Yes. Don't be... Don't believe that you're a Pharaoh. I got something. You know that I promise you something and you're going to do it. You know that. It's a time that, that we began to believe in forgetting things for the best of your soul. And the process is many times, I don't know, but many times, it's, I speak in my experience, you got to forget the past. In Philippians chapter 13, uh, chapter 3, verse 13, this is what Paul say. Forgetting what is behind and straining toward what is ahead, I press on toward the goal to win the prize for which God has called me heavenward in Christ Jesus. 
He's not finished with you. He's not finished with Nicky Cruz. He's still the same today, yesterday, and forever. Amen. Oh, yes. God has been faithful in the past. He will be faithful for the future. And God will be there for you all the time. All the time. That's it. Let me tell you something. This is for you that you don't know Christ as your person save you. We are not here to put you down. If somebody put you down, that's no good. That person, that's it. not true Christian. Because you never forget from where you came from. And we have the tendency to do that. But let me tell you this. Sum it up everything together. Can God use Nikki Cruz from where I came from? And we here is Sonny with an explosive ministry, a visionary. I don't want to be in that category. I love what I'm doing to be an evangelist. And I love what he's doing in rescue so many people from the pits of hell into the kingdoms of the Lord Jesus Christ. <laughs> but when I got converted, it was a different time and age. I was a rebel with our cause. I did a lot of wrong things. And I confess that I hurt people a lot. And some people, they went to the grave. And I, be, and I believe that we took the chance for that person to know Jesus Christ. But many people might say, uh, Nikki, what are the essence of your life? It's very simple. God can use and save anybody regardless how deep in sin you are. Excuse me. God can break the curse of those families that they are bound. Those children that they don't need to suffer. That will happen. Sometimes I feel insignificant. I do. Holding this microphone in front of you is a tremendous privilege that God has given me. I don't deserve it. Watch if my family coming to Jesus. Something that is impossible to believe. Coming from the wounds of my mother into the world of the living, just a baby. Just born. The first sound was a crying. A crying. Why? Because I was so secure in the wounds of my mother. It was warm. There was love. There was things that a mother know. An experience. It's cold. It is cold in this world. That was the first crime for me. It's cold. And I didn't know because I'm a babe. I'm going to be confronted to a brutal world. I can never deny who I am. And from where I came from. And the blood that ran through my arms. It was a curse. A curse. And to experience. 
that I was born in the heart of witchcraft. To know that I'm going to go to hell together with my mother and my father, a satanic priest. This is for you guys that don't know Christ. And then, being beat up, my eyes closed with so much punishment, punch that my mother gave me. And I was breathing and all of this thing. I don't want to go no more in details. But you know what hurt? When your mother called you, you're a son of Satan. When your mother called you, I curse the day that I brought you into this world. And to have a big family, 17 brothers and one sister. We all was destined to go to hell. And who was leading the past? My dad. My mother. They are taking us straight in that past. All of them. Together. All of them. To go to hell. And that demon followed me. And manifests himself. When I was looking at the middle and I committed a crime, very crime, and I'm full of blood of the enemy, and I'm here washing my face, and then there is the face of my mother laughing and just say the things to remind me what she said when I was nine years old. And here, all of the blue sky, God sent a servant, a man, with a message when I was lost to tell me in front of my gangs, in front of uh, 300 people there, Nikki, Jesus love you. Nikki, you can cut me in thousand pieces. You can throw them right there on the street. But remember, every little piece when I cry now, Jesus love you. And I'm standing here as a living testimony of the grace of God, of the forgiveness of God to you, to let you know that he can take nobody, he can make somebody a child of the Lord. Not only that, but my biggest, my biggest reward in my life is this. That I got the opportunity To break the curse. I got converted. I gave my life to Jesus. And when I just cry out to Jesus. There is. And I accept forgiveness. There is. The curse is broken. The blood of Jesus Christ. Is more powerful than the blood of animals. Yes. I don't need to try to go to crusades. My greatest joy was to bring my mother to Jesus. And there is a power when I preach just about my mother, about forgiveness. My brothers. And yet, three of them became ministers. Ministers. If Jesus did it for me. Is Jesus did it for my family. He can do it for you. Many of you are monum monuments of the grace of God. You have experienced forgiveness. And those that you might say, well, what's the matter with people clapping their hands all the time and go wild on the stage? That's not your business. Stop judging people. Because they are free, exciting. They, are, they have life, life that has breathed inside. Yes, 
Jesus love you. Peter, do you love me? Peter again, do you love me? Peter again, do you love me? Oh Lord, oh God, you know. You know that I love you. And this altar call is going to be for those who are, that want to receive a baptism of love, a baptism of forgiveness. And then there's going to be a baptism of joy. Because this is fantastic. Es excuse me. Are you telling me when you came to that piano, start playing the piano for me to stop? This is for you right now. Those who don't know Christ as your personal Savior, you laugh with me and you talk to me and I talk to you, I'm going to invite you to one of the greatest walk of your life. I want to take you to one of the greatest experience of your life. And you're going to be, become just like them. Fanatic for Jesus. Okay? Those backsliders. I want you to know. You cannot put time to the Lord. And repent in the last moment. Because it might never happen. But now it can happen. Hmm? Everybody standing. And I was playing around with you. I was playing around with you. Okay, Moses. You got the beer. What do you have here to sing it something nice, soft? So the people began to understand that they're coming. There's going to be a group that we're going to pray for you. I want you to come and get it right. You, that you feel like a failure, like Peter. There's a promise for you. And that promise is that he's going he gonna to be faithful for, what you, for this decision that you're going to make for him, for Jesus. So I want you to get out of your seat. Get out of your seat. And don't look to your left, or light, or right. I want you to come forward in the name of Jesus. Stand right here. And I am, I am not going to stay here for a long time. It's time to confess. It's time to repent. It's time to give you all to Jesus Christ. Get out wherever you are. If I were you, I run to this altar right now asking Jesus, enough is enough, help me. All right, go ahead. Just come. Cause I just want to speak the name of Jesus. Yes. Over every heart and every mind. I know there is peace within your presence. I speak Jesus. Come on, sing. Your name is power. Your name is here. Bring your whole family because your right now, is this is desperate moment, def desperate time. Bring We're losing our children. We're losing our marriage. There's a lot of things going on wrong just get out from whatever you are in the name of Jesus Christ forget about the people don't don't, don't put attention to the people you come by yourself your name is light break every strong heart 